In this video, I'm going to talk about coordinate systems. Okay, so if we have a a set of vectors, okay, and B, and we're going to assume that those set of vectors forms a basis for the vector space B, then for all x, okay, for any x that belongs to that vector space, there is a unique set of scalars, or sometimes we call it weights, okay, uh, such that x can be written as a linear combination of those vectors along with those weights. Okay, so this is a very important uh, concept. Uh, we're going to use this later when we do when we convert from a standard basis to a non-standard basis and vice versa. Okay, so the important thing is that uh, for this discussion is that we want to prove that uh, this linear combination turns out to be unique. Okay, all right. So we want to show this. All right, so let's prove this. Okay. All right. So, so we're we're assuming that that b that the beta spans v. Okay, that's because it's a basis for a vector space. Okay. All right. So we know that. Okay, we know that beta spans v okay that comes from the definition of the basis okay remember it's spanning the vector space and it's also those vectors are literally independent of each other okay that's the two criteria for for being a basis in a vector space okay so we know that b spans v and okay there exists some scalars there exist scalars okay uh, such that that x is can be written as a linear combination of those vectors in b and beta so it's going to be c1 times b1 plus c2 times b2 plus cn times bn okay so they so we can we pick a vector in the vector space, okay, and then we can write it as a linear combination of those basis vectors, okay. All right, and that's because we know it spans, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to suppose that uh, we we pick the same, right? We want to show that this is unique. So we're going to do is we're we're going to assume that we can rewrite this. We can rewrite x in terms of a linear combination, but using different scalars, okay. All right, so suppose that that x okay can be written as instead of using the weights uh, using the values of c for our weights, we can use the values of d. So c and d are going to be right some another set of scalars. So d let's say d one times b one plus d two times B2, and then so on. Okay, for some scalars. D1, D2, Dn. Okay. All right, so we have two representations now for the same vector x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the difference now. Okay, so we're going to have, so we have x minus x, okay. So we're going to take the difference, okay. So we're going to have c1 minus b1, okay, actually. This is c1, yeah, d1 times b1 plus c2 minus d2 times b2 plus cn minus dn, okay? So all we did is, again, just take the difference between these, okay? All right, so now, because we know that we're, that vectors b1, b2, all the way up to bn belong to the 
uh, long is a basis. Okay, well, it belongs in beta. Okay, which we're assuming is a basis for the vector space. So that means, okay, since it, in that case we know that um, since beta is a right, since beta is a basis. Okay. Okay, so since that means, right, the vectors B1, B2, and so on, Bn are linearly independent. Okay. Are literally independent. Okay. Therefore, okay. That means if we go back and look at, if we look at the difference, okay, C1 minus D1 must be zero. C2 minus two D2 must be zero. Cn minus Dn. Those have to be zero because we're assuming that these are B1, B2, and Bn are literally independent. So for that to happen, the the weights, okay, or the sorry, the coefficients in front of the vectors each must be zero. Okay. Therefore, right, so C1 minus D1 must be equal to zero, C2 minus D2 must be equal to zero, and so on. Okay. So in general, okay, so for for i between 1 and n, ci minus di is equal to 0. So hence we have ci must be equal to d of i. So that shows you, that shows us that, okay, the, the scalar c, c1, c2, and cn must be equal to d1, d2, and dn. They must be, right? They have to be equal because of the fact that b1, b2, and bn are literally independent of each other. So this shows uh, that our representation for x is is unique. Okay, so therefore, okay, is a unique representation. Okay, and that's a very important uh, idea or concept uh, that we need to use. Okay.